Dreamers Welcome Podcast. <laughs> Boy, don't get us. Hey, these Sorry, intros, these to... intros on this one, I love it, man. We getting into a Dreamers Welcome Podcast. We in the building right now. God damn it, I go by CEO Peso, blessed and highly favored. Live from Timeless Studio, man. Shouts out to my nigga X, bro, blessing me with the platform again. Boy, it was getting intense. I had to hurry to turn these cameras on this motherfucker, man. <laughs> Yo, the conversations before the camera go, I'm like, damn, bro, we got to get this shit going now. It's, it's whatever. But on the platform today, man, first off, Dre shot this, my companion, bro. Shouts out to him. He Shouts did. out to the Tom Ford cologne I got on today as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all heard that axe uh, <laughs> snub in the beginning. But uh, introduce yourself for the people, G. Um, they call me Mr. Bracket Rat Rouge, because that's what I got on right now. The $800 bottle. You talk feel me? Um, about, about $50 a squirt. So, okay. so any, any woman that come up to me trying to touch me because I smell good, hands off me, peasant. Hands Yo. off. But well, I go by the live is man DJ Jada on the building. You know the vibe. There you go, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Had a plug Yo, that. The cologne alone. That that okay, bro. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but now nah, I appreciate you on the platform, bro. Like I said, X man, Dre set it up. I, I was blessed to meet you through them, and um, you know I was telling Oski man, just caught a vibe with y'all niggas, bro. Y'all, y'all mad cool though, and your professionalism how you had it down. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, when I saw you do the pod with uh K Kilo, I was yeah. down here. I'm like, bro, this shit making these like I was taking notes on it. Like, <laughs> like cuz keeping it cool, the phone's going off, you keeping it solid. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> niggas gotta like tie down on that shit though. But th- bro. that just comes from being in radio though. Like, cause you know, when you in the studio, hey, everybody phone on silent. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't need to mess up my interview. I ain't trying to be in an interview, you know, and phones going off and anything because that could dis- disrupt everything. So that's where that comes from. I'm just used to being in studios and it's like, hey, phones on silent. Yeah, period. But but you held it down. I'm like, yeah. And, it. and I just, I'd love to see that shit, though. It just, it. Like I said, a profession, eh, professionalism. Um, Man, we might as well talk about it, bro. Because we, we was dabbing on that a little bit before. How you feel <laughs> about the Bengals, man? man? How you feel that it's, it's right there, man? <laughs> Oh, we about to get the dub Sunday. It's about to be hey, easy work. Burrow going to get 500 yards, Period. passing yards. Um, <laughs> I feel like uh, Chase, they going to they gonna double team him. So he, he might not be able to turn up. But T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, CJ, uh, they going to do what it do. Boy, Mixon okay. going to have a crazy game. Paint the city orange. Yes, paint the city orange. I got a question, though, because this nigga Dre said some shit, and I waited to ask this, bro. He used to stay here. He moved to Dayton. Mm-hmm. Is it allowed for that nigga to move back if they win? No. <laughs> Yo, bro. First of all, let me say this. Like, let minute. me say this. Me, I know this shit ain't gonna fly. Dre, 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 my brother, man. I love him to death, bro. But he be trying to be like me so bad because, like, first, he moved to Cincinnati. Like, all right, cool. You know, welcome to the city, my G. Then he moved to my hood. And then he started claiming my hood. The audacity. And the audacity. The audacity. And then he started telling me I can't come back to my hood. Like, bro, you got to relax, bro. Like, you got to relax, though. But, I don't, nah, he, he can say... check in. Yeah. He can say in Dayton. He can say in Dayton. And, 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 you know, rep Dayton. Dayton, you know, the suburb of Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> so, <bird. laughs> so, but I, I I rock with Day and, and and Dre the homie. So you know yeah. I might I might make it cool for him to come back. You know and visit sometimes. Yeah, yeah, man. I think he on that shit, man. He he was already looking up Super Bowl tickets and everything. That was so funny. <laughs> he want he want to he want to rep the city now though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when he was here, he was so nine three seven, so nine three seven. <laughs> now, hey, yo, but uh, how did y'all meet too? You and Dre, man. Uh, we met through X, man. Uh-huh. Like I don't. I don't I don't even remember the exact day. I just remember uh, uh, X telling me, like, yo, I got this dude, bro. He he do videos, bro. He about to be lit. And that's how we met, for real, for real. Yeah. I remember uh, the first video he did was, a, was it the Carlos Rossi video? Yeah, that was my first video yeah. ever. Yeah, that the was very the first, first one ever. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, and we all had the mask on and that. And, yeah. like, that's when I really seen him work. And I'm like... All right, bro, might be lit. He might be lit. He might got a little talent. I might have to, you know, shape him a little bit, you know. But he got son. He got son. Period, period. Man, so um, let's talk about uh, your background a little bit, man, your upbringing and what got you into what you're doing right now, though. Uh, um, well, I... I grew up in Bond Hill, so like growing up, I had to put that. Why in is there. that funny, man? Because because that's my neighborhood. Okay, okay. Playing that since the neighborhood. Okay. But uh, but like growing up, what's so crazy? I used to rap. Word. So I was a rapper. Like I knew I was about to be the next 
Hov. Like, I, I was in a rap group. We had different names. It was 007. Then it was a PA, a whole bunch of crazy shit. So um, growing up, I always played different instruments, different music instruments um, from saxophone, keyboards, drums, uh, everything. Yeah. So music always stayed with me. But how I started DJing was because one year I was like, I want to learn how to DJ. I just wanted this to learn. period. That was it. Just, that was it. Uh, like yeah. this year, I'm gonna learn how to DJ. So I told my mama, like, I want some turntables. She like, I'm not buying, you know, turntables because they was expensive. Boy, like, then, like, ain't, yeah, and this man. was before, like, the CDJs and yeah, the, the computers. Uh, what's the, and, uh, take, the, uh, yeah, the 1200s. Yeah, take yeah, yeah. 1200s. Yep. Like, so she was like, I'm not buying you that. So that year for Christmas, she bought me some. And, like, from then, it was it was up. Like, I DJed my first basement party in Bond Hill. That was, like, my first party ever. And I thought I was just lit from then. <laughs> but I ain't take it serious. I didn't take it serious. I stopped DJing. Then I went to college. I went to college. And when I was in college, I was a, I was a promoter. Right. So all the fraternities and sororities would get me to promote their parties because when I promote them, like, them shits would go up. Going in, yeah. So I'm like, hell, I need more money. I'm broke. So I was like, I told my that mama. Shit hit. Yeah, that shit hit. Like college it hit. Yeah. So I had my mama send me my turntables to Alabama mm -hmm. and I pawned them because I was that broke. I'm like, I ain't got rent money. Like, fuck it, these gotta go. Yeah, man. <laughs> so my home, my next door neighbor, he wound up uh having some, that's when like the controllers first came out. Like the very first controller, he had one. So he wound up selling it to me for fifty dollars. And then I DJ a uh, uh, a high school party. At, at my school. And from then, it was a wrap. Like, I got my first $50 for DJing that and was like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's up from here. Period, period. So, that's how, that's, from then, it's, it's been up. So, when you pawned your joints, though, like, did you, what, what at, at, was that a moment you was about to just say, fuck it, period? Like, if your room, your, what you say, your neighbor came through with the controller? Yeah, play? I was, well, my neighbor, he was a, a little DJ. He ain't. Wasn't not serious, but not to downplay him. But <laughs> yeah, like, not to downplay he him. Alive. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he was definitely he wasn't alive. Me. Yeah, yeah. He definitely wasn't alive. But he ain't do it for real. He just had some. He had DJ some little stuff, they call him. But uh, I think that was just a point where I was just broke as hell. Like, man, like, broke as hell. Like, these got to go. Yeah. Like, I, I somehow make some money back to buy some more. But right now, these got to yeah, go. Yeah, this is the only yeah. value I got to yeah, get Yeah, exactly. Going. Exactly. So that's how that was, though. But I didn't give up, of course. So yeah. do, you, do you still got a partnership or sponsor by Bel Air at all? Yeah. Where's yeah. my blue bottle, brother? See, what happened was, <laughs> you claimed you was from Barn Hill, and they probably sent it to that address. Left you off the <laughs> they sent it to that address. That's what it is. Yeah, so it's but, probably there somewhere. So they got left off the mailing list, my yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> I got another one. Look, Mo so Motown, Capitol Records, and Columbia, they gave you a salute for National DJ Day, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right, so how does that feel? I mean, it feels good. Like it's always, it always feels good. I mean, being recognized by the record labels and everything like that. Um, but um, my my, I feel like they really appreciate me when they send me them plaques. Yeah, that's like the championship Super Bowl so, ring. So how do you even get acknowledged like that? Like, how does one even get acknowledged like that? You gotta be like a top DJ, or it's just off of relationships and people knowing that you put in the work. Like, yeah. when it come into, like, breaking records, they know, like, yo, I need this record to pop in this market. Let uh -huh. me holler at j -Do. He's gonna what, get it going. What's one of your favorite records that you know you stand behind that you helped broke, that you know you did? Mm. Um, It's a couple of them. A couple of them. I don't even have plaques for those. But um, I feel like, first, my one of my favorite ones was... Um, French Montana, that um, Unforgettable. Okay. Oh, word. Yeah, with uh, Ray Shrimmer. Yeah. I, you got no plaque for that? No, I don't. Shit. I don't have no plaque for that. They need to run that. They up. definitely that need to run that. Shit, that's, like, that's like a diamond record. Yeah, I need yeah. that. But uh, what's so crazy that the day that, that the record label got that record, yeah. I was at Epic in the office. Mm. And then uh, my my homeboy, he was like, oh, I just got this new French Montana record. You want to hear it? And I'm like, hell yeah. I just so happened to be in New York at the label that day. Yeah. So I'm like, hell yeah. So he played. I said, bro, send it to me now. Yeah. He like, nah, I can't send it to you. We got to go through all the protocol. I'm like, send it to me, bro. I'm going to blast that bitch off. Like, <laughs> yeah. So he ain't send it to me. Like, So I left. Like Three days later, he wound up sending it to me. Like, don't play it yet. Yeah. Don't play it yet. 
Uh-huh. I played that bitch. Like, <laughs> I played it. Like, I played it. <laughs> so I was the first DJ. I was the first DJ in the country to play that. Uh, along yeah, yeah. with uh, Cardi B, Bodak Yellow. That's right. I, I know about that. Yeah, that Bodak Yellow. Um, and... Psh. But, I mean, but how, how do you... I mean, well, you answered it already. Basically, they just... They, they knew you was already just dope-ass DJ, and then mm-hmm. they reach out and then just get you to blast records, like, playing the shit. Mm-hmm. That's fucking crazy. I didn't, yeah. And you get plaques for that shit. Yeah. Yeah, they send you plaques for that sh- so, Um Not all the time they don't send you plaques. Like, because now the record labels, they don't really send out plaques no more because it costs too much. So, yeah. like, a plaque probably costs, like, 1500 to make. Man, she mm-hmm. mad. Man, bad. So, if they, right if they got to send it to every DJ in the country who was a, a button bad. pushing, yeah. button pusher for that record, like, sh- that'll run you up. I know Cardi probably spent, like, close to... Five hundred thousand for for the uh for the uh her plaques were Damn. sent them out yeah but that's just a nice wow. nice piece of work to have on the wall though, yeah man. definitely like, yeah it's, it's like crazy. what like platinum like platinum plaques something yeah like that's what I that's 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 what gives me the the mm. the gives me the going like oh yeah like I got a plaque yeah, yeah. it's time to keep going yeah absolutely yeah what what was your um moment of like yeah this shit taking off for me like this is like I'm established. Um, I've had a couple of them, but like I think my my biggest moment is when I DJ um, the Bad Boys reunion tour. Word, damn! Like that was at the actual. Yeah, it was like, at US Bank Arena. Yeah, well, it's it's Heritage Bank Arena now, but yeah, like Bad Boys reunion tour. And what's so crazy is that I got in trouble from from my PD at the time for doing it. Because, like, the label reached out to me, like, yo, we in the city, like, you trying to DJ the reunion tour? Hell yeah! Absolutely. Like, what? It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Hell yeah! Like, so, my PD at the time, he was a bitch. I'll say it now, because he don't work there no more. But he was a bitch. <laughs> and he was like, he was just like, well, you got to get it confirmed through me. You know the fuck I don't? I'm about to go do this. Yeah. So, I went and did it, and that was like, it was lit. Because I had that bitch rocking. Boy, like, uh, what, it was like rocking. Over 20, 30,000 motherfuckers yeah, in there. Yeah, like, plus, you know, I got a chance to chance to meet all the artists. Diddy, X, God Bless the Dead, like, um, Lil' Kim, like, yeah. everybody. Like, so that was definitely, like, one of those moments where it was like, I'm here. Was yeah. that one of your uh, biggest checks without saying numbers? Was that one of your You want to hear what's so crazy? This is the craziest thing that a lot of people, a lot of people probably won't even, I did it for free. That's not crazy. Nah, hell no, I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> They, yeah, I'm going to say that. That shit because, makes sense. Because what's so crazy is that the relationships I made off of that and the connections I made, yeah. you can't put a price on that. A, bro, what's your quote? Hey, uh, what is every, every opportunity, opportunity don't come, come with a paycheck. Yeah. It don't. And that's yeah. what a lot of people be like, oh, yeah. But like a lot of stuff, like some of the biggest things I ever did, like I ain't get a check for. It's a fact. But it's just because of like the relationships you build and everything, like you can't put a you can't, can't put, put a price, price tag on, on that. Man. You can't put a price tag on having hard Pierre number and being able to call him like, yo, what's up, bro? Like, I need this, I need that. Yo. Yeah. You can't put a price tag on that. You can't yeah. put a price tag on being able to chop it up with Diddy and, and him giving you game and shit. Like, you can't put a price tag on that. Yeah, bro. That's so that's, that's how, really priceless shit, yeah. though. But yeah. and, and it'd be crazy too, because in the moments of like, you know you're going to need some bread type shit, but mm-hmm. then you got to just snap out of it. Like, all right, you know why you're doing this shit. Yeah. Like, no money coming in, but keep your character tight because you got to, mm-hmm. when you go on this shit like that, you know you down bad, but it's like the opportunity, it's like, it's just looking forward into it of like, man, this shit going to make sense in the long run. Facts. Yeah. And that's why that's why I feel like me, me and X is so, so close because me and him got to understand like, bro, this shit ain't about the money. Like, the money going to come. Yeah, yeah. Of course yeah. we want to get the money, but at the end of the day it's like, bro, like we we want to be able to provide a service that's un un untouchable, undeniable. Like, undeniable. Yeah. like you can't you can't you can't put a price on this cuz it's so it means so much. Like yeah. timeless just in self like, bro, like I come here a lot because not only do, of course, you get you get a product, but you learn so much from coming here. Like, it's more than just coming here and recording your podcast. Like, you may learn some whole other shit that you may not have even thought about. Yep. And that's why, I like, you know, it's sometimes, it's, like I said, like you said, bro, it's more, it's not always about money. I mean, and, see, you, I mean, like I said, I was watching you here. This is my first time, and I was learning 
you know how you was holding the pod now, and it, I mean, cause coming here is like it's it's like an experience. Yeah, definitely. And you know, cause he got the shots out to the plug and play going on today. But he, I'm gonna stay for that too. And I don't know, I just like how like y'all just got this unit of how y'all move with each other though, mm. and it's really like. It's a satisfying feeling, you know what I mean? It's be yeah. like, you know, you part of some good shit. You know, motherfuckers walk out feeling like, you know, like a couple new connections under their belt. So y'all really, yeah. y'all, y'all killing that shit and putting on for it. For exactly. It. Yeah. But um, man, so so because you DJ down here, how do you deal with like the I hate saying locals, but the artists that want you to like spend their music, play their shit. Like, how do you? What's your process on handling that shit? Um. <laughs> Honestly, like for now, uh, you talk to Henry. Henry yeah, you talk, to me. <laughs> talk to Smooth. Talk to Call Smooth. That's what you do. Call Smooth, bro. Like Call Smooth. I don't talk to none of these niggas. Call Smooth. But nah, like usually it's just about like who I see working. Um, I reach out to them. A lot of them like they don't reach back. I, I don't know if y'all paid attention to Facebook, but Master Fresh had a whole post. I just seen that. Yeah, like, and a lot of it, it don't, it be the artists. Like, they they have poor communication skills. Like, they don't reach back out to people. They don't send their music. If they send their music, they only send it to one person and think everybody. But me, what I do is I try to reach out to people and I try to make that connection. Now, if they make the connection back, then we on deck. But if not, then... Yeah, I can't do nothing for you, but yeah. if it's something that's lit going on, like I, I do my due diligence, uh, trying to get it on top of it or something I feel like that's lit. Period. But because they do be still spending like like local music here down here, like on the, yeah. on the radio, right? See, yeah. that's why I can't stand dates. I do a whole yeah. local yeah, music. Fight for that, <laughs> bro. It makes sense. I was I be riding through like while I'm coming through the uh from from, from Atlanta, and I hear some shit, and I just be like, bro. We we can't we don't get that up there. But bro. but but to 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 be fair, like I understand why why a, I won't say I don't understand, but I can see from a business perspective why a date and station wouldn't play a lot of local art. Just because, like for instance, Cincinnati, you may hear it in the mixes, but you won't hear them in rotation. True, true. But yeah. that's because of like. I mean, like a lot of artists. I mean, a lot of artists got relationships with some of the DJs on air, so of course they'll play they they joints. But from a business perspective, it's like okay, I could play all these local artists, but eighty percent of the city don't know it, don't really care about it, and that's not bringing us money. Yeah. So why should I keep continuing to play them if it ain't making money? And then you got to think about it like this: like radio nowadays is not like how it was. Back in the early 2000s, early 90s, where you know you go, you go to the radio to break music. Mm -hmm. Music getting broke on YouTube, uh, title, Spotify, all of that. So now radio stations is competing with with them, with the streaming yeah. services. Yeah. So now it's like a competition. Like so, when radio is like, I gotta play the hits. I gotta yeah. play. I gotta play what everybody wants to hear. Yeah. yeah. I ain't got time to play so and so from. Avondale, who just got a new joint, and all his homeboys like it, cause it's like that's not that's not making no sense. Yeah, man, cause man, as a DJ too, man, you definitely play a. Um, I don't know if you put this on your resume, but you got the A and R field. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, yeah, an A and R. Sure. I'm yeah. definitely an A and R. Right, period. So <laughs> definitely. A &R. So when you like, how you know? How you know it's the one? How you know like? All right, I'm about to run this bitch up. Like, what what is it? Like, yeah, this is gonna go. I don't. I guess with me, it's just a. a a feeling, like a feeling. Like, I done been in a studio with artists and, like, constructed song, arranged songs. Like, I don't I don't call myself a producer. I'm more like a, an arranger, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, so it's just, like, about how I make you feel. Like, the, the, the vibe that it gets. You can't get caught up in the moment when you trying to think of a, oh, yeah, this is going to be a hit. It can't be like that, or it can't be on some, oh, that's my homeboy, I'm being biased. Nah, like, it's, if I'm one of my homeboys drops some trash in them, like, that's not that it, bro. It, bro. <laughs> that's not it, bro. So, so give me the uh, the DJ Jado AR perspective real quick, right? Give me who do you think is going to be the next nigga or the next artist or the next two artists to blow from Cincinnati as of right now, as of what you see. As of right now? It could just be one if you only think of one. Um, hmm. it's a lot of different people that's popping right now, but mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know their situation. So, but I mean, artists who I like, um, I like Skylar Black. Mm -hmm. 
I like Mia West Millie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sort of like a, a OG, so I like I like a lot of the older rappers too. Yeah. Like I yeah. like the Scallies, and I like I like the K Rallies. Like you feel yeah. me? Like people like that too. So a lot of the newer artists, like the Gators and yeah. Birdos, and you know artists like that, like they definitely got a wave. The Mundos, mm-hmm. they definitely got a wave. But yeah. it's just a I don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I know one artist. My art. I got a new artist. His name Tzar. Okay. He about to pop. What's up? He you gonna, you gonna bring him, bring him my way? Yeah, he gonna be a plug and play today. Okay. So you be um. So you take artists and put them on your wing though, and just some, not not all. No, 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 not all. No, <laughs> not, not all. Not all. Uh, yeah, but it's it's. I done took some artists and really closely worked with them. And, like, I had success with them. Like, I mean, not every single one, but, yeah, I done had success with a lot of artists who I done closely worked with. You got a good feeling about this artist right here? Yeah, definitely. You got a single we can hear, like, after this or something? Yeah, I got, I got it on my phone. It ain't out yet. You ain't shot the video yet? He shot the video, but no, no, we want to get a Drake shot. <laughs> and, and, and a CEO Peso <laughs> shot. The, like, we got we to gotta, we gotta get... We got to get y'all because he's new, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, this person, you want to do... Uh, it's, I, I'm being honest, this is my nephew. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay. But he lit. Like, I ain't... I ain't if he was my nephew and he was yeah. trash, yeah. I'd be like, nah, bro, this ain't it. Go yeah. drive trucks or something like... But type shit. He actually, <laughs> okay. he actually live. Get your CDLs, my jig. Yeah, like, yeah he okay. actually lit. What's... Um, I'm going to ask you too, man. What's some key components it take to just be an overall great DJ? Re- repeat that again? What's some key components that it takes to just be an overall great DJ? Um, Patience. Patience, because it, it don't happen overnight. Um, Willingness to listen and learn, because you can't feel like you know everything. Because I learned... I learn stuff every day from 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 my OGs, um, and just hard work and dedication. Like you might start out making fifty dollars a, a, a night, and you might end up making five thousand a night, but it ain't gonna happen within a week. Period. You feel me? Just take patience and hard work and dedication. So you had some mentors or like people that you definitely that you looked up to. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Throughout. Like. Uh, DJ Skills was one of them. Um, Kelson, Urban Informer, he was another one. Um, Big Greg. Uh, that's just to name a few. Yeah. Who who really was like, hey, bro, let me teach you some some shit. Yeah. Like, All right, cool. And that'd be tough to get the the just the good, bright people that just give you the good game on that shit, though. Yeah, man. because a lot of people want their spotlight now. Yeah. And they like, if they if they high in their spotlight, they like, man, I ain't trying to share it with nobody. I ain't trying to give you the game or nothing like that. But a real OG would be like, I mean, I ain't going to do this forever. Like me, I feel like, bro, I'm not going to be a DJ forever. Like, so yeah. I'm I'm honestly looking for a, a new young nigga to be mm-hmm. like, hey, bro, come here. Let me show you how to do this so you could do it better than I did. You feel me? How big you want to take your brand on? Like, like... <laughs> There's no limit. Yeah. There's no limit. Like, it's no limit. Because it sounds like you got something in the works if you know that DJing ain't going to be the, the end all be all. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's dope, man. Definitely. Like, I don't want to just be uh, be known as the guy who DJ. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, it's so much you more. You've been past that, though. Yeah, but there's so much more to it than just that. Like, whether it has to deal with music or business, like, I don't want to just be known as a DJ. And I feel like even now, like, People don't know me just for DJing. Like, yeah, that's like my thing, but that ain't all I'm known for. So I always look at you more like an A&R. Like, that's how. I, yeah. When I think of DJ J though, I think of the, one of the gatekeepers to the music industry. Honestly, I appreciate that because I don't look at myself like that. I just look at me personally. I look at myself as a regular guy. Like when I leave here, I gotta go to work. <laughs> like I'm just a regular guy. If the, if the artists knew. Yeah, if, if they knew. <laughs> if they knew. <laughs> I put in the work, though. They'll call me the live. I've, I've been no in, the, I've been in the, um, the regular labels with you. Yeah, de- definitely. I'm a guy, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dre been there with me. They so. chopping it up on first name basis. Like. Yeah. <laughs> nah, like, we running wrong. through them bitches. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. The the relationships, is the, that's it for as far as the longevity getting this motherfucker. And mm-hmm. just to hear how you, motherfuckers phone call away, you and the labels and shit like that, like, yeah, the brand going up. If you already connected like that, and then you already got the ear for it, like, you know, I, I see some major, major more accomplishments yeah, coming, bro. I, I definitely, I, I appreciate that, but I got some more shit. But it's, it's it's people who, like, inspire me to, who I see doing doing shit. It's like, damn, 
I gotta get past them. Like, yeah. So yeah. I didn't even ask. Bro. How long you been DJing? <laughs> All like, this shit. Nigga. Professionally, I would say since I was twenty three. Yeah. So like eleven years. Word word. Okay, you, you got any more? Nah, that's it. I'm about to say so like 40 years. <laughs> so you trying to say I'm old? All right. Damn. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> so uh, before we wrap up, I, I ask everybody this. Um, what's a good piece of advice or quote that you live off of? Um, one that I've been living off recently. Yeah. Uh, today's price is not yesterday's price. Here it was. <laughs> Today's oh, price bro. is not yesterday's hey, price. I mean, bro, that shit was so G. And he he be like uh, just drilling it. I'm like, but, but man, that's some bro. real <laughs> shit though. Like just because it was that yesterday, it's definitely not that today. Well, yeah. motherfuckers hate when like when when they ask us to do shit, and then we take some shit like that and run with it because it's true. It's like, yeah, hey, cuz yeah. like, yeah, you gotta respect <laughs> it though. Like you gotta respect it. That's I just tell my nigga, I'm like, bro, you don't go to McDonald's and negotiate they Big Macs, bro. Exactly. Like, like it, it is what it is, my G. You don't go to your your <laughs> rental office and negotiate your rent, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Right. They like, hey, it's this. Or that late fee gonna be on that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. man. But, uh, man, I appreciate you on the platform, man. Definitely appreciate um, y'all, man. This is really helping me expect, I mean, expand my brand. And, um, you know, I, I was telling uh, on the last pod, man, I just like that getting introduced to people like y'all. You know, it just, it helps me get connected into the, the Cincinnati music. Mm. And it just weeds out all of the people who ain't, you know, you got your motherfuckers who claim they do this shit properly and everything. Mm. But I'm just glad to just, you know. Cappers. Meet, yeah, you feel me? Mm. But to meet professionals at it. Amongst being a professional is dope, though. So I, I appreciate, appreciate you, bro. Most definitely. I appreciate you, yeah. man. Congratulations to y'all on the podcast, too, man. Thank you. Thank you. Stop him from wearing Axe. <laughs> yo, yo, you got to stop wearing that Axe shit, bro. bro. Like, that's up, uh, man. That cologne talk, I got to step mine's up. You know what I mean? Oh, I'll, I'll get you right, bro. Because I'm going to have you shitting on him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Keep dreaming. We out, y'all. Dreamers Welcome Podcast.